کہ جی ایم ایم فار ایکچولی سیگمنٹیشن نو سو سو اٹس اٹس لائک یو نو اے مکسچر ماڈل رائٹ سو اٹس لائک سینگ دیٹ اٹس لائک سینگ دیٹ یو نو اف آئی سو رائٹ انسٹیڈ آف انسٹیڈ آف یو نو گوئنگ سو اٹس یو نو ون وے ٹو تھنک اباؤٹ اٹ اس اٹس کائنڈ آف اے پروبیبلسٹک ورژن آف ورژن آف ایکچولی کے مینس ورژن آف کے مینس You can also think of it as some kind of, you know, a generative model, okay, at the, at the, at the end of the end of the day. But anyway, right, as far as segmentation is concerned, right, we can actually think about it as being a probabilistic version of k-means. And, uh, and one of the things that it does is clusters are modeled as actually a Gaussian. Modeled as a Gaussians, which basically means that, right, means that we don't simply take the means alone, right. Now, we are, we are going to talk about means, covariances, everything. and uh, the other thing is that uh, it does a soft assignment right so you can so 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 in that sense right even if you have something on the boundary and all right you don't have to worry you can say that there is a higher probability that it belongs to that cluster probably lesser probability that it actually belongs to the other cluster and so on right so so it does enable soft assignment and then if you actually go through the go through uh, go through the steps right you will realize that that you know that uh, that basically what do you call a probabilistic thing right will will become will become very very apparent when you compare it with how k means worked uh, and uh, the cluster shapes are of course right w what will be the shape here hmm no no but what will be the shape of the cluster there it was a center here it will be there it was it was spherical right sorry not center what is it huh? ellipsoidal ellipsoidal right? ellipsoidal again right i mean you know again right it doesn't mean that mean that right, gmm can solve can solve for example right all your issues for example right, if i showed you one such image right which i think if i showed okay anyway right we won't going to get into that but i'm just saying that this this is at least better than the k means because this uh, this is more like you know it's taking more things into account right while it is actually doing the assignment and also the say, cluster shapes right need not be uh, need not be say, constrained to be spherical which is actually a good thing so for example right in the other case right where we had the data no where is that we are here right so now i mean i can i can probably think of think of right having some kind of an ellipsoidal for this and then maybe maybe right something like that and then i can have a soft assignment for these pixels that are falling in the boundary and i can probably say that right, with more confidence that they belong to the inner cluster and probably with less confidence that they belong to the outer cluster this it has to figure out right, right we do not know because again right this again the generative in the sense that right there is there is something right something the something underlying that happened which which simply threw out all these points now and uh, and right and basically we do not know from from which of these gaussians right these points came right and our job is to kind of figure out as to as to what is the what is the, is the group assignment and uh, and uh, and then right in the process arrive at a segmentation task so yeah so so that's it right? having this ellipsoidal of course you know is surely more more helpful than sort of you know uh, than a spherical cluster now the another way you do is so the way this works is that the data sort of a distribution right that uh, from where right all of all of this happens to happens to come all these data points have been observed right is is actually described by by uh, this one mixture model okay by a gmm which which means i mean i'm going to take all scalars okay but all of this is easily extendable to the vector case just for simplicity so pfx right will look like summation over over let's say c number of the clusters but again right you need to you need to you need to know these uh, know the number of gaussians this is in k means right you need to know the number of groups again here right you need to know the you know the you know the number so pi c then let's say gaussian uh, x semicolon whatever mu c sigma c and this pi c sort of right indicates the strength strength of the gaussian of the cth gaussian right of the cth gaussian so again right again again it's the same issue right so for example we want to be able to tell that uh, so we want to be able to model this using multiple such uh, this gaussians and we need to know right what should be the what should be the number of such uh, such uh, this on the gaussians that we need to model the cp of x and 
and the, and all that we have is again again this very same set of points, right? Now, now uh, now no, no, the way to way to way to write you know walk around this problem of problem of not knowing a group assignment. See, for example, you know, right? If you knew the group assignment, then maybe you can just do an MLE and then you're done. Right? You'll get your you'll get your means, variances, everything, right? Which will optimize for that uh, for the, for that observation. But in this case, because we do not know, right? So the way, right? Typically, okay, it is done is uh, done is, is that you introduce what is called a, what is called a latent variable. Okay, so there is called a latent or see hidden. So what is what is this thing, right? When which is latent, this is spicy. So for example, right? So the spicy for those of you who have done, how do you interpret spicy? I've I've just written it as a strength to the Gaussian, but then spicy is like what? I mean, I don't know what what would be. A, Exactly. So it's like the fraction of the points which are in, the, in that group, right? As, uh, no, as compared to the entire set of points, right? So it actually so so in a sense, right? So if pi c is pi c is very high for I say a certain group. Then it means that when you draw a sample, it's very likely that right, it will come from there because of the fact that pi c for that is very high because among the among the total set of points, that particular group happens to have a lot of points, right, within it. But this, right, since we do not know. And uh, and we have to start somewhere, right? So when you start somewhere, so what we do is, you know, so uh, so the so the way to way to sort of right, uh, right think about it is f first of all among these mixture components, right? I would like to first of all identify if I identify one mixture, right? So for example, so what you'll do is, you know, introduce a latent or hidden variable z, right? Where where is the probability that is z equal to c, right? Is equal to actually uh, this one, the the pi c, right? So 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 what this means is that probability that you'll pick up the cth mixture, right? That is that is this whole thing is a, is a kind of mixture of Gaussians, right? So the probability that you pick that will pick the Cth mixture itself is actually pi c. That means if pi c is very high for a certain c, then you see probability that you would pick that that particular mixture to draw the sample, right? Is very high. And once you once once you have once you have done that, right? Then then this uh, then this then this x right right given z becomes simply n of uh, n of right x right mu k. Whatever it, I use C there now, right? Uh, given that, given that, right? Now I've said C, so it's like you know mu C, C sigma C, right? So, so in a way, so this, but this, but this group assignment and and uh, the optimization of the of the you know, model, right, has to be done in a in a, in a sort of right, uh, no, what do you call right, iterative way, and we call this hidden information because this information we do not have. Right. We do not know how this came out. Right. We do not know from where x came, whether uh, whether a particular x came from pi pi or whatever the first cluster or the second Gaussian. We do not know, right? So, so we are sort of right, making making an attempt to get there, and uh, and and what is hidden, right? We are trying to say that let's get a reveal it, but then right initially what you reveal right may not be true. So in the sense. So, so, the, so this is where the EM algorithm comes. There is something called expectation maximization, and this EM algorithm exactly works on this kind of you know principle that in the in the in the E step, right, you actually reveal the the you know get a, a hidden information, even though it you know you know it may not be accurate. But then you start with something where you re, where you reveal both both say x and z, and then once you have revealed x and z, then you actually find out uh, find out what are called say responsibilities. You guys have done right GMM, therefore you can. So I'll just write, give you an outline of EM, and then and once you have the responsibilities for each each uh, sort of say data point, what responsibility means that how much a particular cluster is responsible for XI, right? So you have these data points. So responsibilities means how much can you say is a particular cluster, or how well a particular cl cluster explains an XI, right? That's the that's the E step, and then and then once you once once you have these responsibilities, then you can actually go to the go to the M step. Where you, where you can actually do an do a sort of a maximum likelihood, where you can actually compute recompute your pi c's. You can recompute now that you know the you know which cluster is responsible, how much for each point. You can go back and then compute the pi c's, the mu c's, the you know sigma c's, and all that. And then again, kind of say come back and then and then right do this process right iteratively. And uh, the proof right we'll not go into, but then you know, but then one can one can show that uh, one can show that right, this ultimately maximizes uh, maximizes your CP of p of x for all the points. Right? That means, in a sense, right, you have identified what p of x will best describe your x one to whatever x n. Right? That's that's the idea. Right? So this so math uh, is fairly straightforward. Right? So so what you have to do is so let's kind of let's say EM for actually GMM. Right? So this is the expectation maximization. There is there is a reason why they call this an you know, expectation at all. I won't kind of go into that. Uh, so EM right. Uh, so EM for right GMM. I mean EM EM you can apply in various situations. In this case, we are applying it for GMM, right? And the, and then the E step right, which is the estimation step or the expectation step, as it is called, right? So here what you do is the following. 
and uh, now right I will draw the parallel with, with k-means okay. So, the, now you will be able to appreciate as to why we think of this as a kind of a probabilistic version of, uh, of k-means okay e step. So, in the e step right what you will do is for each data sample for each data sample x i okay, drawn as per of course as, uh, drawn according to see pi c right as I said earlier drawn according to pi c okay and uh, all this assumes that right you are starting with some initial estimates okay. So, that initial estimate could be from the k means itself or it could be it could also be random but then if it is random right then there could be there could be local optima issues even k means right there is no guarantee that right that will be there will be a very good initial estimate. But in the absence of, of anything else you can use k means to start the initial estimation. So, we so find find a responsibility right r i c. So, what is responsibility means that how much is, is a cluster the c th cluster responsible for for a data point x i okay and that that you can you can compute as uh, pi c and then right x i uh, mu c sigma c upon summation over let us say c prime pi c prime n x i mu c prime sigma c prime right and, uh, and of course and as you can see summation r i c or over c prime over over all all c primes is 1 right. So, uh, okay so in a sense so the way to way to interpret this is that if if let us say if let us say right uh, uh, what do you say. So, so if this R i c right if it actually turns out to be turns out to be high right then it actually means that means that right that particular sort of a Gaussian right is best able to explain that particular particular sort of you know a data point x i as compared to the others okay that is what this R i c means it will sum to 1. But then for let us say whichever sort of a cluster it turns out to be high that means that means that cluster is able to actually explain it a lot better than let us say right any of the others okay. Uh, so, yeah so what this means is that um, a high a good or a high value of R i c okay I will just write this as so this a technical word is actually this uh, responsibilities okay a high value of, of R i c indicates that that uh, that the cluster C or the Gaussian right in that sense the cluster C uh, best explains X i compared to others compared to the other other uh, Gaussians right okay R i c dash. Hmm? And the the m step right once you once you once you have these r i c s right so the so the m step right what you can see is that uh, you can actually compute pi c okay no let, let's first compute something called m c which is the which is the say, total number of data points not really I mean uh, in a, in a sense okay so we can we can actually compute this as a summation uh, r i c right over i see what this what this really means is see for example right I mean if you kind of you if you relate this to the k means right you can interpret m c as being the as being the number of data points right in the in the in the in the you know c th group right because there r i c would have been 1 or 0 right it is either here or there right and therefore when you when you when you come up with you see here right r i c is like is like is like between 0 and 1 right. So, that is why it is a kind of probabilistic version whereas there you would have had r i c to be to be just binary right I mean it will be it will be like a one shot vector. It'll be like 0, 0, 0, somewhere 1, 0, 0, 0, right? And so wherever it goes, right, there you, there you get a 1. Therefore, if you sum up the RICs, if you think of this step, this is exactly what we did in the k means, except that there RIC was binary, right? And, and, and wherever wherever it was assigned, right, you would simply add, add all those points, whereas here you add up RICs, okay? So, so you can kind of draw a parallel between this and uh, this and the hard assignment this is where this is where it, it becomes a soft assignment now whereas there it was a hard assignment and then you can then compute pi c right you can actually use this m c to actually compute pi c. So, that will be like m c by m where m is the m is the total number of points right and uh, then you can have to of course compute your mu c which will be like 1 by m c but now but each of the each of the x i should be weighted by r i c r i c x i over i and uh, sigma c will also or sigma square c will also be like 1 by m c then summation weighted by r i c and then x i minus uh, mu c square right. Now, so, so, so these two steps right if you actually right iteratively do 
then there is a proof that that this actually maximizes so so right iteratively doing this right so iteratively iteratively uh, doing e and m step okay and and that's the general em algorithm okay that's not even for this particular case okay and uh, and m step right uh, will actually uh, will will right eventually maximize maximize uh, log likely likelihood of uh, maximize the pfx let's say just to be simple okay so so in a sense you can look upon this as a kind of a generative model right that means that means you got you computed the gaussians that can actually that can actually best explain right what's happening there okay so yeah right so this in a sense is actually gmm right and, and you can show that right if you have this you can actually do a lot better than and and as you can see everything is a soft assignment now right through the ric so so we are not saying that saying that right, something is only here or it's only in that group right we are saying that we are saying that right that uh, that there is an there is there is a probability and therefore right you could also have situations like these where you can say that right even points that fall in the boundary right depending upon how this whole thing worked out right you might be able to say with with less confidence that it it's in a particular cluster and with more confidence that it probably should belong to the other cluster and so on and uh, and this choice of feature space right as i said right it's it's an important thing right we will we can just go through the slides this seems to just says that right what if you chose color what if you chose just a gray scale what if you chose the location also along with the intensity so this is simple right it simply means that you know that feature vector that you have whether you want it to be just a gray scale whether you want it to be rgb whether you want it to be rgb x comma y right whether you want to bring in the spatial location into account all of that is up to you okay it depends on which problem right you are trying to solve okay and uh, and for example if you had something like this right then of course you would have to not uh, just using color and all right would not actually make sense right so you will have to go for a texture or something so all that is there right you will have to look at is it texture similarity similarly right here a zebra right you will have to use a texture in order to say what it is rather than use something like this which is a color based right, which doesn't uh, seem to tell anything at all right so therefore which feature space you choose is one thing okay that is a problem in itself and and for that right there is actually enough enough information available okay well, one can kind of go through any of these works and that will tell you what is a good uh, feature to use but after that right which one should you be using if you go for k means then certain things will happen if you go with the gmm right then certain things will happen so if you take a gmm right then basically that's how it will try to model if you have these points right it will try to you know fit to see ellipsoids through them and uh, yeah this is what it is but i don't i don't know whether there are enough examples here okay now Right, the, the the last thing right within this uh, segmentation right uh, as a kind of clustering is what is called mean shift see for example right, i mean so, so if you had something like this right and uh, and for example right if you had to do uh, do a clustering so this uh, this this uh, this is very hard right for example you cannot think of a gmm being able to do this you cannot think of uh, think of k means or gmm or anything right that can actually do this and uh, and first of all right how do how do you even tell what is a k and all so so mean shift is actually is actually a higher level algorithm than both of these uh, that's actually i mean earlier one I mean, the gmm is actually a parametric approach whereas this mean shift is actually a non parametric approach it does not need the value of k does not need anything does not even assume the shape and right? nothing it assumes okay and that's why it's it's actually a powerful technique unfortunately right not uh, not not much is talked about mean shift but actually it's a very kind of powerful technique so i thought right i'll just talk about it briefly okay tomorrow 